Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Solar Sales Uncensored. I am your host, Aaron Browning, and I am so excited for today's episode. I have my really, really good friend, Mr. Jordan Shaw. I'll share about how I got introduced to him, by the way. It's from family, which is so cool. But today's title, I'm going to go ahead and tease it up front because I want to grab all of your attention. We're going to talk about outshining the competition, a deep dive into Jordan Shaw's meteoric rise as a solar sales phenom. And what makes his story so powerful is his background that we're going to jump into in the beginning. He doesn't know it yet. We've gone over a few things that we're going to, little topics that we're going to talk about, but I'm going to really pick his brain at the end. You're going to walk away with some nuggets that if you are in sales, if you are thinking about transitioning to solar sales, it's going to blow your mind. If you're in solar sales and you want to crush it, like Jordan is, these tips, these little nuggets are going to change everything. So without further ado, Mr. Jordan Shaw, how the heck are you, man? Doing well, man. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I, I know it's been uh it's been it's been in the works. Your schedule is is chaotic. It is busy. You got a beautiful family and you are selling the the heck out of some solar, man. <laughs> yeah, I just did another one actually within the last 10 minutes before we jumped on the call. Impromptu. Did you really? No, yeah, no joke. So it reached out to me yesterday late yesterday said i saw you recommended on the groups we're, we're ready to do this thing uh call my husband up called him up spent less than 10 minutes on the phone with him i told him hey you got to do this i mean like we're just we can we can be as formal or informal but if we go formal it's gonna eat up some time um this is not how i normally do it but i'm just tell you what you tell me what number you need to be at tell me some of the details you need uh for the size of the system that you've gotten in the past and i'll see if i can make it happen and i came I'm in below it and he just signed his contract in the last 15 minutes congrats man i love that we're, we're actually yep. going to come back to that i'll make a little note <laughs> um for for those that don't know you yet and and if they don't they're they're obviously not with our company because you are, are on every single stage you are on every single training we do i mean your name is ingrained with with our company as you guys know i'll do my best not to say company names here but it, it will happen by accident it is what it is um jordan a little bit about your background you come from sales no, actually, I don't. I'm actually a, uh, a 17 year IT veteran. Love and it. so the closest I got to sales was I was working for a little company called Dell uh, back in the day. And uh, so I actually was in what they call a stealth sales mode. Uh, I was an on site systems engineer in OSC, which meant I kind of was in the sales role, but I didn't carry a quota. It was the closest you could get to sales without carrying a quota. And so I would I would work closely with the account execs and the systems engineers and your consultants and uh, just basically just be an on-site technical resource. So my my journey was really around doing uh, just helping you know people understand the value of IT and cloud and working at companies like Dell, Google, that type of thing. And uh, my journey in solar actually was over nine years ago at this point, which is crazy wow. to say where we were the first homes in our community to go solar, or the first homeowner in our community to go solar. And uh, then the wave of questions came and I decided, hey, this is a technology. I can either go ahead and get smart on this or I can just ignore all the questions. I decided to get smart and that started my journey with solar and my love for it. I love it. Absolutely love it. And then we got introduced through my brother um, who is at Dell. And is, mm -hmm. is that where you met him? Yeah, yeah. So I actually worked in the Dell federal uh, sector. So I actually supported a lot of I, even though I was centered around like uh, the actual Social Security Administration out in Woodlawn. And, uh, and we, I, I like I would help them with just what they like, I was on site for them specifically, I they would use me around I was, uh, there's a handful of the OSCs, and we would just sometimes interchange on accounts and things like that. So I would help him on some of his accounts and things like that, just help him support, you know, what he was doing down there, make him look good. I love it, man. And uh, you do not know this story, but when I when I started the solar journey like six seven months ago, now I'm still a, I'm still a rookie, still a noob. Um, my brother was one of my first calls. Obviously, he's a sales vet. Um, I hit him up, and he said, "Solar." I said, "Yeah, man, this thing like we're, we're gonna put it on your house." And he goes, "Dude, I don't know, man. I got a really good friend in solar." And I was like, uh, "You're my brother. I don't care how close you are with Jordan." <laughs> uh, like, what, what do you mean? He was like, "Dude, you got to check out this guy. He is killing it." Um, I was probably two days into this thing. I go and look up, but sure enough, your name is all over every Facebook page, everything with our company. It was just really funny. Um, even now, he still hasn't signed. It's a whole different subject. Uh, but every time I, I bring up solar, he's like, how's Jordan? How's Jordan? I was like, dude, leave Jordan alone, man. We'll, we'll wish Jordan well, but we got we to get solar on your house. Uh, but he, he does, man. He sings your praises and says you're an absolute rock star, which I have uh, found and discovered, uh, I guess, over the last six months of knowing you. 
So what, so you mentioned that you went solar. I'm, I'm guessing you did not sell it to yourself. You just saw the value in it. Yeah. So back in the day, uh, it was a lot of the time or a lot of the value add was more in PPAs, those okay. types of power purchase agreements, because the cost of solar was a lot higher back in nine, 10 years ago. And so a lot of people doing it was really not really an economic reason as much as more of, I want to go green. I want to hedge my long-term bets. And I was in probably the worst market in Western Maryland to do it in because our cost per kilowatt hour is like 10 cents per 10 cents or something like that. It was really, really low. And so I got it for like seven, eight cents per kilowatt hour. And I, so I did a PPA with like a larger company and uh, just because I saw the value in that it was technology. I just, it was really cool. The panels did not look like they look like now. I mean, they were blue silver frame Trina solar panels. I think wow. they were like 240 watt. Yeah. You know, something like that, like 230, 240 watt. And uh, we, yeah, so that's when we did it. I had like a sunny boy in the garage that, you know, and <laughs> things like that. I mean, it was old school, man. It was, and uh, we talked, we were talking about batteries. Battery storage wasn't where it was at, as, as it was today. Uh, but yeah, we, I just bought it through a company that, um, or, or le uh, not leased it, but did a PPA through a company that um, was providing it at the time. That so how, really how, how, how'd you get involved becoming a, a sales rep? Like what? Uh, it started the referral tree. Like I just started yeah. doing the $500 referrals, $400 referrals, that type of stuff at that point. And uh, that's where I started. So it was never like a full blown business. It was always like a hobby initially. And it was something that I could do in conjunction with my career in IT. And about five years ago or so, I decided to kind of branch off on my own, kind of brand myself. I didn't know what I was going to call myself. I reached out to a buddy of mine uh, who was in the... Uh, in in graphics art, you know, graphic design artist, uh, and he he was like, I said, hey, like, I need you to go ahead and make me a logo because I don't I I don't know like I'm, this is my name, but I don't I don't know how to give kind of like a voice around it. And so he actually built the we we went through a couple design iterations, built my logo, which is great. And so I that's when I kind of split out and I didn't I didn't align necessarily with one company. I was able to kind of align with multiple. And so the brokerage side of my my business kind of started and so when i jumped in and i and i partnered with uh with the company that you know we're working with right now uh together is what i what i ended up seeing in that was like okay hey i can just shift i can just shift some of my clientele i can shift my referral trees all of that so that's how i really kind of got started on the solar side is like i started small with just the just little four or five hundred dollar referral commissions into what it is today which has become like a full-blown business so, so would you equate that to what, what our company calls the ambassador program? Is that essentially what you were doing? Yeah. So I was more of a, an ambassador. So the problem with me being an ambassador was I wasn't able to actually scale my business in any way because yeah. I couldn't offer referrals to my, my clients. And they always thought they were buying from me, even though I was handing them off to the actual company. And that was a part of the problem was like, nobody gets excited over a hundred dollar referral, yep. right? They just don't. They get excited over a thousand dollars or you know five hundred bucks, something like that, and so I think that was a part of my problem was it wasn't able to scale correctly. I never had a sales rep that was consistent. Now, when my wife yeah. and I moved out to SoCal, I think it was like four years ago at this point. Yeah, about four years or so ago, uh, and, and maybe it's well, maybe it's actually five. Gosh, it's been crazy. I, I did align with some local companies in the SoCal market where uh, I was actually have, able to have more of a consistent sales rep that I was able to work with. But my my primary problem with that was that anytime I had a consultation, they were doing the design, which means if something changed in the consultation, I couldn't do it on the fly. Yep. which immediately just crashes the whole, like I can't scale with that. And so as much as I loved working with them, I knew that I needed to find something else that I could actually design with, but wasn't an exclusive agreement either. Because if that company didn't do what my client needed, I needed to be able to have the position to kind of pivot and be able to offer something to my clients in terms of just solutions. I, I call myself a concierge energy advisor. Love that. That's what I meant. Yeah. Which, you know, that actually kind of came out of, have you ever seen the, have seen the show, uh, uh, Royal Pains? No, no. It's like a concierge. Write down, okay. Yeah. Write it down. It's a, it's a, it's an older program, a, a TV program that it was a, a, it was a concierge doctor in the Hamptons. And so he gets fired from Hank gets fired from his, his job because he never, he didn't save a board member. He made a decision saying the board member was stable. When I left, I went over here and I did something. He gets fired because the board member actually dies from the hospital. And what he wow. ends up doing is he starts a concierge medicine business in the Hamptons for the rich. 
And I said, that is such a like crazy cool idea. And then when I was like, you know what? Holy smokes, I'm a concierge energy advisor. This is what I do. So that's kind of actually where that came from. <laughs> I love that. So so kind of paint the picture for that. So you so were far. running, you were essentially running deals with various companies, kind of plugging mm -hmm. and playing. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting yeah. you say that because I, I haven't heard, obviously I'm, I'm new here. Um, when I recruit, I recruit a lot of people, as I'm sure you know, uh, that's, that's my, my passion. A lot of the solar pros, same idea. It's kind of cool where I can say, stay where you're at. I just want to get, get a foot in the door. Come run a couple of deals with us. Mm -hmm. See what we're all about. Without fail, as I'm sure what happened to you, they run a couple of deals and they're like, oh my gosh, this thing is incredible. Is that is that similar to kind of your story? Yeah, absolutely. And so I actually joined up uh, with uh, Power based, uh, and that was back in September of 2021. Okay. And so when I did that, I I was I did the same thing. A couple weeks, I I waited a couple weeks. I didn't quite go full blown. Just yep. I just wanted to get I got used to the platform. I thought about it. I said, all right, how can I utilize this platform? And the ambassador program was a huge avenue for me to do so because it offered a thousand dollar referral referral fee. I was like, and that's when I first looked at the company. I looked at the referral commission because I was looking at more of a nationwide presence in addition to augmenting my current uh, foot footing in SoCal. And when I did that, basically what I ended up uh, discovering was, OK, wait, I can take all my customers that I've ever signed up for solar, say I have a thousand dollar referral program, onboarded 40 of them to the ambassador program. And you know, numbers, right? And only a handful of them will really take it mm -hmm. seriously and they'll, you know, give you referrals, but that's okay. That's all I needed. And what I ended up doing was I ended up going to tier three within the month after in October. And then it just, it just started to snowball. I, I went from making just a few grand to making 10 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, 40. And I'm doing like 40 to 50 K a month now in my business and which blows my mind. I, I ended, I think my business ended with over my payout in December of this past year. Now, if you fast forward to the end of 2022, my payout was over $60,000 wow. just in December with over six. And then the payout for a finance rebate in January was $6,400 was so to me, I count that kind of in the same. So if you think about that, that was over $66,000 technically in that month. I mean, a blow in my mind. I mean, just so. Doing, and, and, doing, and that was for the month of December? That was December. It was over okay. 60K. And, 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 then and most I, solar pros would say that's a slow month in terms of, I, of time of year. Uh, yeah, December. That was with all the installs. A lot of pros will say, okay, well, I'm just nurturing the installs that gotcha. came off the summer. Yep. But what ended up happening was we have a net metering uh, 3.0 in California. I just came off of a 90 day run with just closing deals uh, with, and I did about 70% 70, 70 of my 2022 numbers in terms of the number of deals closed in the last 90 days. Wow. Can, so can I was you operating, ballpark, ballpark what that hmm? number looks like? Well, I, I did over 122 deals last year between uh, personal and uh, tier three uh, mentor deals uh, with non pros. And so I actually did, I'm at 97 active projects right now in my pipeline, but I signed, I want to say I, I signed 70%. So I signed what 60 to 70 deals. I'd have to go look at my dashboard, but I did about, yeah. I ran the number. It was like 70% of my 20, 2022 numbers in terms of the number of contracts. Last month, I did about 36 contracts. And the average commission at our company is like somewhere between five to seven K. I have a knack for doing small little expansions. So mine are usually about three or four K just yep. because I just, I'm, you know, they're 10, 12 panels. <laughs> Don't get too excited about them. But if you run that, I had a six figure month last month in sales wow. in March, which is so the, a slow month. Yeah, that's a slow month. <laughs> those, those of you listening, think about that for a second. Like, right. right I know some of you will be watching this on YouTube. So I, I, I'm pretty interactive. Who here would love to have a six-figure month, right? That is that is what he's doing on the norm. He's doing it in the slow season, and we're going to take a deep dive today on how he's doing that. But that is incredible, man. Um, I know you don't share those numbers very often, so I appreciate you doing that. And I'll yeah, for audience, I know they do too. A couple of things. I want to make sure we, we dumb this down and we're not just speaking our company's uh, language, if you will. Ambassador program. Can you kind of give a 60 second? What yeah. is that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So the ambassador program is literally a referral program for a program for your business. And so all of my clients, I sign up for the ambassador program just right away. 
And and what that does for me is obviously they can refer because they are buying me before they buy the company that I refer them to. And now it doesn't matter if I'm referring predominantly to one company. Hey, if they're doing a job, they have the right warranties, the right products, the right service. No, you know that's what matters. And honestly, every single solar company has its issues, right? You know, it's construction. Like you're never going to, it's never going to ever be perfect, right? But we can aspire, you know, if we're in search of perfection, we can at least find some excellence, right? And so what the ambassador program does is it'll, it's a, it's a free advertising tool for my business. That's my customer acquisition cost. So most of those referrals, if you think about it, I did 36 contracts last month and minimum, those were referrals from either ambassadors or other types of uh, referral agents. Wow. And the ambassador, so if you think about it, I, I'm spent, I'm paying out over $30,000 in commissions beyond what I'm already making. Uh, to to those to those individuals when those installs actually happen, that's the best form of advertising. Hundred percent, it's cost of sales. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I, I yeah. totally agree. Um, I didn't know we were going to go here, but I think it's important. I, I get a lot of questions about ambassadors. How you're staying in conversation? How do you stay in relationship? How do you keep them motivated? How do you how do you how do you get them knowing what's possible? Can you walk us through like once you sign one up? How are you nurturing? How how are you staying front of mind with them? Right. And, and some of the, some of the reps that are very successful know how to get a, they get a referral before an install ever, ever occurs. Love it. So if you're walking out of a meeting with somebody and they said, I've got somebody that I want to refer to you, then, and you, they can don't, I mean, don't chase the referral, make sure the referral kind of comes to you, shoot them a text message, things like that. Don't act like you're desperate, right? You just be like, Hey, like, Hey, uh, you know, Susie said that you were, or John said that you were good, that you were looking at going solar. And when you, when you do that, you know, that you're getting a, you're getting a referral right out, out of the gate that helps solidify that actual contract with that. Cause they're not going to go anywhere then. Because they referred somebody to you, you took care of them, or at least you tried to help them. Sometimes it doesn't, you know, it doesn't always work. But that's the initial touch point. Uh, I'm trying to always get better on doing drips and things like that. And I'm not, I, I, because my business is, is completely referral based, I'm not the best at doing drips on on ambassadors and, and the referrals and things like that. So I'm starting to get more tools like CRM based tools, such as bomb bomb, things like that, where I can do a video message and do release. So like I was doing video messages to my ambassadors about changes coming up in California. I was blasting that around, you know, those, but I don't have them on like a newsletter or something like that. I'm just connected to a lot of my clients on social. Love it. And that, and that helps kind of give me be the top of the mind when they're saying, Oh, I have a solar guy. Right. That's, that's, that really helps. You bring up a really good point too, man. Um, this is that I have not taught at, at, at power at all and, and shame on me for doing it. We used to teach us in real estate. That's my background um, of, of locking down the relationship by getting referrals. I'm a big believer and this might be a little nugget for you. Um, every time I deliver good news, I, I want to get a referral. So that could right. be like, oh my gosh, we just got your CAD drawings back. Oh my gosh, we just got HOA approval. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, the engineering team just did blank. Oh my gosh, we're going to install. Who do you know that I can bless? Who do you know that I can reach out to and, right. and, and save you know, the same 20%, 40%, whatever that conversation looks like? It's those touch points where you're just, you're locking it down. You're really walking them through it, man. That's, that's oh, powerful. I've, I've been doing that for the last two weeks when clients were signing with me and saying, I hope they can get, get me in ahead of this change in California for net metering. And so I would, uh, in the, in the back end in the portal, they released a, an update where I can actually see the date that the application was submitted to the utility. Nice. And so what I've been doing is I've just been grabbing a screenshot of that and texting it and messaging it saying, we got you in you just little things like that. And they're like, Oh my gosh, thank you so much for letting me know. Yeah. And just sending hearts and likes and everything. Right. And that, like you said, it's just, there's the, it's those touch points within the actual con you know connections with the your, with your client that will just solidify saying i like you so because what it also does is if things go south for some reason in the project and even i i mean after 200 and i'll just give you some more numbers like i've, I've done over 200 sales on the platform with wow. my with my one partner it's just astronomical it's crazy to say that out loud honestly you're going to have your projects that have their issues, main panel upgrades, roof, something, you do a ground mount, costs go crazy high, fails inspection, stuff like that. I have a 68 panel ground mount in Temecula. We're still trying to get online because 
the the, the inspector does, didn't like the way we did the electrical. You know, things like that. Just stu- just silly stuff like that. Like stuff that's completely inside my control, right? Yeah, really. <laughs> and and so, but with the client, it's like just staying in contact with them, sending them gifts, sending that, you know, just, just making sure that you're in communication. Hey, how's your, you know, how's your, I you saw so the family member, member had surgery. How's that going? Those types of things. And then they know the surgery that my daughter had in December, you know, those types of that, that goes beyond like, okay, this stinks right? Like yeah. maybe it's not working right yet. Right. But at least then you have solidified relationships. So when it's going great, that helps you when it's going bad, that helps you still. I think the key word you just said is relationship. You're taking it from a transaction to a relationship, um, which, and, and you probably arguably do that better than anyone I've ever met, man. And I think it's because you understand the ambassador program and you're not basing this off speaking for you, but you're not basing this off one transaction. You know, that one transaction handled the way you just said could be a hundred more uh, from right. that person as a future ambassador. Like that is huge. Well, I'll give you an example. Just the other day we had, we failed two inspections or just because the inspector did not like a hardwired uh, EV charger that's in the garage. Now the builder installed the outlet that, and with, with basically it was all there. Okay. So the breaker was there. All of that was there. The customer paid for it uh, when they built the house from the start. But what ended up happening was they installed a EV out, uh, charger and they hardwired it in. And in that action, that charger actually had to be permitted. So the no, no matter what we were doing, the inspector just goes, nope, we're not passing it. And you're like, gosh. So I talk to my install partner. I say, okay, how much it is to permit the thing? And they're like, probably a thousand bucks. I said, go do it. Just charge it to COGS. Like I, this is a 36 panel expansion. Yep. I'll be fine. Like Get it, done. it just, it, because, and that was the reason, because I want him to want to refer me in the future. Yep. That's enough. By the way, we can do a whole podcast on that, man. I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's, 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 it's an incredible topic. We do it in real estate again. I tell people don't get so bogged down where you draw a line in the sand. I'm not giving it up. They need to do it. It is theirs. Think about all the future deals. I I a hundred percent agree with what you just said. I don't jump to that first every single time, but if that's going to keep the deal going, dude, like what, are you crazy not to do it. Well, and like main panel upgrades, like you try to avoid them when you can yeah. because they're two or three thousand dollars. And so if I get a picture of a panel and I'm like, I think we're going to need an upgrade here, I'd work that into the cost on the front end, so it's no longer an issue. Because if something comes up where oh we need to do a main panel, do we ever get a picture of the main panel? And the answer was no. Yeah. Now I have something where I'm like I can either eat that or I can say tell you what normally this is three or four grand to do a, a panel or whatever the the cost is at the time. I got it discounted for you for to two k. I'm we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna eat some of that cost. It just you know, in order to put the solar in, we have to do this. And that helps soften the blow too. You're like, 100%. oh, you came to bat and you and you brought the pricing down for me and what it was. And I said, yeah, of course. I said, because I should have caught that on the front. Um, you didn't send me a picture of your panel. <laughs> so you're going to share in that in that blame <laughs> at the same time. But, uh, you know, those types of things like, hey, we're, we're locked in. We got you good. You know, but like you said, don't get don't get hung up. Right. Don't get hung up because it, it comes out right. Like it evens out. Like the averages, like you'll make more money over here. You'll make less money over here. You just, that's the name of the game. And, and what matters is the, is the, how the clients actually felt when they left, right? Because then they're going to generate more revenue for you in the future because they were happy with the experience that you gave them. You know, the, the example, little nuggets that you're dropping, I just want to make sure it's not lost on anybody. Um, in that story, that scenario, you could tell you went to bat for them is how they felt. Um, mm-hmm. and that's what people want. Like, I, I, I want to know Jordan fought for me. I want to know he fought to give me that discount. Like that goes a long freaking way, man. And the way you delivered that is, is, is flawless. Um, let, let's, let's change d- directions of where I want to go sure. for a second. Um, another topic that I believe you do better than I'm gonna get trouble for saying this, but you do better than anyone in our company is social media marketing. Um, and I think when I first joined, there was a panel. I don't even know if you were there. I don't, I don't know why. You, oh, well, you weren't, you weren't there. I forgot you had an issue at home. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, I remember there had to be a reason, but, but <laughs> I, I watch what you do on social media. You're killing it. It's organic. Um, I know you mentioned Facebook groups and things like that. Let's talk about, I want to come back to the Facebook group, Facebook groups in a second. Let's talk about what you post, how often you post on your, on your general wall on Facebook, if you don't mind. I mean, so I post just generically myself uh, it depends uh, just because i'm organic with it 
uh, recently I ended up just kind of removing social from my phone to begin with. Cause I was just, I was going so crazy. Like I was like, all right, it's messenger, it's text. Yep. That's it. I don't need any more notifications. I'll check. I'll check it when I check it. Uh, and so I, I used to check in all the time at places and things like that. And just to make sure people know that I'm not a robot, Yep. you know, that was kind of critical, but a little bit of secret to my success was, uh Oh, secrets. I, I hope everybody I hears figured. it. All right. So this is uncensored. I'm not always the one actually posting. Oh, I love systems. Tell me more. So, Tell me more. What I, what I ended up doing was I figured out that I was so busy. My time was better spent doing what I do best on the sales side, helping my, you know, consulting with my clients that I knew that from a content perspective that I could go fly some drones, get some content, but I didn't have the time to edit them. Yeah. I, I just didn't have the time to post them. I was posting just like quick 15 second clips of when I flew the drone and I, I posted it. Uh, I was doing that type of stuff, screenshotting when I sold a deal. I was doing those and I still do those things. But I knew that my time was more valuable on an hourly basis to be spent elsewhere that I started outsourcing that type of stuff. So I would spend $200 for a video or $800 for a video. That's just going to blow it out, be so much better than what I could ever do. And because it, it took my brand to the next level. And then I basically hired a social media person that I trusted to run. And we just were just in lockstep on what she's posting. Sometimes she posts stuff. I didn't even know it was coming. It was just like, it's like right on the money. And so I actually strategically, she posts across Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and she posts different things across those. So like LinkedIn is more professional. I want a more, I want a different type of post that's actually happening on LinkedIn than I want on my Instagram, where I have a lot of connections and real estate agents and things like that, as well as Facebook, where most of my, my customers follow me, right? I want to be talking about different things. I want inspirational quotes. I want installations. I want success stories. I want things like that on my, you know, I want referrals. I want things that people can share on Facebook. So that gives me, generates more revenue. And so that's a part of my secret is you and a lot of successful people, you got to get to the point where you understand that you have to release the controls at some point. You can't do, be a master of everything. You have to know what you're good at. And then you've got to basically delegate out. And the most successful people know how to properly delegate on, in terms of what they do best and trust somebody else to do this for them. And, and it's not always going to be right and it's not always going to be perfect, but no. I'd rather have multiple posts going out on a weekly basis and different times and drops and trips and things like that. So she's posting three to five times a week, if not more, across all my social channels. And we made a decision. I used to, I built up my brand side my business, my Facebook business and my Facebook, Instagram and my LinkedIn. And we did that up until the end of the year. And I said, all right, Q1, we've got some waves and some changes happening. I need to go ahead and switch it to my actual me. I need, cause I have more connections there. I feel that would be better. So we were building up the brand side and then we were sharing from my my business side, right? To my personal. And then we made this shift where we did, we started filling content for me. And when we did that, my engagement spiked, things just, sp things just increased. So I had already built the business like, okay, if somebody Googles or, you know, finds me on Facebook on my business, they can see I'm actually active on that business page. Yep. However, I want them to be able to find my personal and know exactly what I'm, that I'm alive and well, and then I'm not a robot at the same time. So we made that switch and I just, that helped immeasurably as well. So the secret here is I'm actually not always doing those posts that actually kind of got me in trouble a little bit while I was in the hospital too. <laughs> Everybody's like, why are you on Facebook? Yeah, really? It's like your daughter's in the hospital. I'm like, that's not me necessarily posting that, you know, like yeah, that, but I'm flattered to know that you think it was me. <laughs> that, that's awesome. It also means that person who you hire is doing a great job, but it sounds like you, it's organic. Yes. A lot to unpack on what you just said. Um, my really, the reason this podcast came about, um, it, we're, we're here to help solar professionals treat this like a business. There are so many uh, just, that are just transactional, quite frankly. In fact, most, a large percentage. I love everything you just said. Like that is awesome. Um, one little nugget, actually, let me go back to that real quick before I share something I'm on what, um, the, the person you hired, what, what does that role in terms of like cost look like for people who are like, dude, I totally hire someone like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, you'd be prepared to spend 800, 800 bucks a month plus. Okay. And that's for several posts a week on various platforms on various, like, right. It depends on the level of engagement and the number of posts really traditionally. Cool. So different packages and that, and that's just 
that's just for like a single person. Like if you're hiring like a, a group and a team, you're going to spend two or three grand a month to do something like that. Now that doesn't include like advertising or anything like that, but yep. that's okay. I don't, I'm not paying to boost my posts. Yep. I could, but I, I don't need to. I just want something that's organic. You know, the hashtags are the biggest is are the and the reels that are dropped. That whole reel and hashtag like video drops, that's been like the best. I didn't even understand it fully. Yeah. And it's something that was missing. Like, why are people doing stories and po whatever? I didn't realize the level of like you could you could drop a reel and all of a sudden it's got twenty thousand views. Yeah, it's crazy, man. And you're like, I don't even ha I'm not even connected to twenty thousand people. No. But just it through like a hashtag, it's like all of a sudden it's it's connected. So that, that was that's reach, I think it was a little man. I mean, that's that, reach. You, you would have paid thousands of dollars to maybe more tens of thousands to, to run an ad that could reach that many people. It, it is uh, absolutely mind blowing what these platforms are doing. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I did a, a, a YouTube short. Let's throw another one. in. I did this uh, two days ago now um, where I was talking about if you don't know the rules of each platform, I don't mean rules, what you can post or can't post, but the rules of how those platforms play, you can't win. Like, I got to know the rules. If I know the rules of any business, I'll figure out a way to win it. Like, I, honestly, it's the truth. Um, same thing. There are certain certain platforms where the hashtags are, are key. Other 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 platforms, it's it's live content. Um, other ones like Instagram, they're coming back to to, to photos now and, and uh, carousels, whatever else they call it. So you got to learn that. Um, the other thing you said, too, about, about knowing what you make an hour um, and outsourcing some of it, you can't do all of it. I'm a big believer personally, like you mentioned drone. I, I have two drones sitting to my left. I love tech. Like I, I could go film drones all day long. I, I'm good at it. I enjoy it. When you start to figure out business owners listening, what you make per hour, the way I decide what I outsource is if, if the quick question, do I lose money doing it myself? Not do I enjoy it? Cause I enjoy that. If Jordan called me up and said, dude, I had four installs and they go film it. I'm all over it. Like that. I geek on that, but I would lose money. My hourly rate is too freaking high for me to go do that. So I'd rather pay someone else, not because I don't want to always. Sometimes that is the case, but I, I, I don't want to lose money. And so it's really starting to figure that out. Start to ask yourself business owner questions. How is my time best used? For most of you in sales, it is not doing something that's not sales related. Point blank. Yep. I mean, the, my Uber Eats, my Uber Eats pricing, I mean, just the account has gone up. <laughs> just, like I've just been ordering because I like when you're having four consultations in a day, yeah, you don't have time to go out. No, like that's 30 minutes. But like, what did that actually cost me versus paying $25 to get something delivered? Yeah, like $25 and I made five grand. Yep. See, that's how business owners think. It's, it's just different. Talk about Facebook groups. I know you do a lot in there. Uh, hopefully you're okay sharing some of your strategies sure. on that. Yeah, cool. Sure. Uh, basically be the local resource be the don't always be attacked you know go oh you need to go solar with me like don't be doing all that what kind of groups are these i they're just local like talk groups like like every single city has them it's where you go on you're like hey i'm looking for a recommendation for a business or and can somebody help me the you know my my plumbing you know shot you know something something happened right and so it's those types of talks like groups like you'll have a local your local city plus talk or something to that degree and the successful solar pros are also in there for solar businesses or their consultants are there. There's a lot of people that are in there and you'll get the kind of the, you'll get kind of the strange posts where it's uh, people like tag themselves or like, just try to, that's the worst. I'm yeah. just going to say that. Like if you, if you jump in one of those talks, <laughs> I'm just going to say this right now. If you jump into one of those talks and somebody's posting something about solar for themselves or something like that, obviously don't post your stuff on top of their stuff. Like that's just not, not right. But if you're, if somebody's saying, Hey, I'm looking for solar quotes, you know, there you like, I, sometimes I will joke. I'll say, here it comes. Like, and it, because people know who I am in the group and they'll laugh about it because they know that it's about to do 50 to a hundred replies on that one post or something like that. Or like, don't do it. Stay away from sun run, you know, things like that. You know, you'll have all that. It's like, you just open up a can and other times what I'll do is I'll, when I'm not buying to get the business in those, in those groups and somebody says, Hey, I got a quote from this company, this company, this company, anybody have any, anything I should watch out for things like that. 
And I, I'll say, hey, well, look for if you're interviewing companies, look for these three things. Look for just their nationwide reach, like uh, just you know what 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 their national presence is, what their cash flow actually is, like how well what what are Love they that. doing? Like are they dependent on one one market? And what are their warranties? Look at all those three values. You know, see what they've got. If they're a local company, hey, they might not be in business next year with certain changes happening. And when you're in those groups and you're providing value outside of just constantly posting on a on a merchant Monday, which is fine. <laughs> Like there was time, like you're, you're going to get people that would tag you all your, your ambassadors are going to and customers are going to tag you. And it gets to the point where they tag you. You don't have to respond and say, thank you necessarily, or, or comment on that post because the people that are serious about it end up messaging you anyway. Yep. So there's messages out. It's like, Hey, everybody in, on, on this talk page recommended you. Okay, well, is there somebody specific? They're like, no, just everybody. I said, okay, well, I can't give an ambassador referral for everybody. How do you, you handle know, that like, then? It's a great question, oh, man. Um, if somebody, if they say, oh yeah, like uh, Peggy, Peggy rec recommended you, like that was the one that I saw first. Then I go ahead and I will tag her on the back end for the referral, saying if it wasn't for Peggy, I'll make sure that you know that is uh, that I wouldn't have I wouldn't have had this sale. Uh, but if it's like, no, everybody in the world just recommended you, I say, okay, well, I can't, I can't isolate who that was. Then I don't have you ever had someone it. come back being like, dude, I, I tagged you on that. Like, what's up or no? No, not really. Cool. But usually they know they're like, Hey, by the way, I, I sent them a message and they'll message basically screenshot and send it. Say, Hey, this person reaches out. Smart. Um, I talked, I talked to you. Like they'll do that. I say, Oh, thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. Like then, then I know that if they do reach out to me that they're getting the referral. Love that. Hey, yeah. By the way, I want to make sure it's not lost on anybody. We got to dumb it down again. Uh, I, I know he talks super advanced, which is awesome. That's why I wanted him here. What, what I love about him offering three strategies, right? For those on YouTube that can see my hand. Um, he is off. I'm sorry, three questions, like three, three buckets to kind of, to kind of look at, to focus on when interviewing solo professionals is he is lifting himself up without even saying himself, without saying his company, his name. Those three questions, I already know his business. He shines. There's no other company that can touch him in those three, those three areas. And so he did that in an indirect way where he's coming from contribution versus like, well, my company is this. My co He doesn't have to do that. He's high level. He already knows how to guide the conversation. I want to make sure you guys pick up on that, dude. Masterful again. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So, so the other part I want to touch on, on the groups, um, and you hit it right at the end, when – your ambassadors are in these groups, your, your people, I, I call it the tribe. So a lot of times you don't even have to go there and like plug yourself. They're doing it for you. Were, were your ambassadors already in the groups? Are you encouraging them to join there? What does that look like? I mean, a lot of those people, I, there are my clients who found me off of those groups. Ah, okay. So it wasn't always like that. So when you started it, you did have to promote, you did have yeah, to say, of course, uh, absolutely. Or, okay, cool. or my client would tag me in a group and it, and Facebook does this great thing where it automatically invites you to that group. Love it. So Love it. If, if, and I may not even be in that community, but I'm on like community pages where I don't even live there, yeah. <laughs> you know, and they just like, they, I have to answer some questions and, um, and where I can, I'll answer them and say, okay, yeah, of course I'm, I'm in this group um, or I'm in this area. So you just answer the questions and they'll invite you in. Yeah. So well, that's a good way. Merchant Monday. So I, I have this, and and that's the thing. You need to adhere to the the rules on the group like that. Next, because the number of times I see somebody go, "Hey, anybody looking for solar consultations?" And it's Tuesday or Wednesday in the week, and it was Merchant Monday. I'm like, dude, like, dude, like you're gonna get yourself kicked for being like dumb, <laughs> you know? Like adhere, just read the read the rules, you know, read the room, right? And that's something that that's something that you got to do is just make sure that you're a professional in that, in whatever way. Uh, I had an interesting interaction with somebody, actually, I'll tell you a little bit of a story where the company, somebody was asking about reviews about a specific company. And I made a comment saying, well, I'm not sure, like they seem to be on the cheaper side. So I don't know what their revenue or their cash looks like or whatever thing like that. They may not be, they may not be there. Like, I'm like, but they get really good reviews. That's all I know. Cause I've lost to that company multiple times, but indirectly I was obviously trying to poke a little bit of a hole in the, in the veil there. And one of the, one of the owners actually responded to me 
And so I just said, Hey man, that's great to under, that's great to know that he's like, no, we're not on the cheap side. We're like, we're good. We're, we're financial, like whatever. He actually defended his company. I said, that is great to hear. You got, you get ravings on these, on the group. I praised him openly and then edited my comment. Love it. Just kind of redirected. I said, all right, well now I know who you are because now I'm like, when I see your name pop up, I know who, which company you're with because sometimes you can go to their Facebook page. You're like, I don't know if I even know, like they don't always have it public. I'm like, leave it public. If you own a company, make sure you're public, right? Yeah, you so. said you said it a couple times, man. I mean, that, that's that's what a pro would do. I mean, you're you're not going to win by bumping heads with another owner of a company who was high level, no. and all of a sudden you go down to a different like, like you just don't. No. So it, yeah, I, I I think that's remarkable, man. I'm like, it's good to hear. I'm like, just be, I'm not going to tell him I lost to him multiple times because no. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, your margin at forty cents per watt, you're not cheap. Like, where you do know. you uh, where where do you see solar going in the next five years? Oh man, we are going to go into, I mean, right now we're at about 4% market penetration in the entire United States, right? So out, out of basically, there's like, I think 87 million eligible households yeah, before exactly. you're even talking about new construction at all, or new construction that actually has solar coming with it, because states are starting to do that. Okay. And so we're talking about just sheer retrofit solar at this point. We're going to really, I think our market penetration is going to explode because there's not, there really hasn't been a good vehicle to get, get solar on rooftops. Like it just, it's been like, kind of like, ugh, like I need, it's like pushing a boulder up the hill. It's all about really the platform. And I feel that we're really going to, we're going to have go to more from solar to solar plus storage. We're going to see batteries really decrease in price. People are going to want to be more grid independent. So depending on where you are in the U S really determines, well, it's not just solar, it's solar. And there's always, there's going to be a solar and like used to be the panels were enough. Now it's the functionality that those panels give you in terms of independence for like hurricanes in Florida or the Carolinas. Right. You're like, why would I buy a generator when I can put solar in with really silent batteries that, automatically switch over that requires zero maintenance we're gonna see a lot of a lot of basically customers wanting to jump on board solar because of the extra value it provides not just from a long-term savings potential Mm -hmm. because and i'm gonna i'm gonna say something that may may maybe you know may 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 hurt some feelings but nobody's about nobody cares about the 25 year savings they they can't they can't forecast 25 years they can forecast five most people sure. aren't in the home 25 years, man. Exactly. So like, why would I keep care it about real? My, why would I care about my 25 year savings? What you say is like, man, your 25 year savings is awesome if you stayed in this house. But let's look at your five year and look and look at your 10 year and say, hey, look at this. You're going to spend this money anyway. Why not build it into an asset that you have and you, that you own? Love so it. because right now you're 100 percent renting your energy. Oh, by the way, let's add some battery storage. Yeah, that costs a little bit more, but now you've got protection for your family. So as much as we're like, oh, I got a six-figure savings on 25 years, I've been painting the five-year picture of saying, if you don't do this, why? Like, why would you not do this? Because you're going to make your money back in five years. Now, you might make your money back in eight or nine. Great. You went from 100% interest over here to owning something over here. And that's a win every single time. And- so people people are going to buy because of the feeling that you give them because of energy security. So I think what we're going to see with solar is a lot more energy security type of conversations yeah. unfold because you're never when you're when you're in a really low cost per kilowatt hour market, you're not really saving you're not selling savings, you're selling energy security long term. When you start factoring in battery technology and smart uh, panels and things like that, you're now selling you're selling a smart home. And more as as we as we shift to more of smarter tech within the house, solar is a natural evolution of that as well. Love that, man. Love that. Um, final question, then we'll wrap up. I appreciate your time as always. What mm-hmm. advice would you have to someone like you who has not who was not sales driven, was not is not coming from a background of sales, but is into this, sees the commissions, sees the freedom, the flexibility? Uh, what we're doing for the environment, what we're doing for homeowners. I and mean, there's just so many layers of, of people winning. What advice would you have for them? So let me let me actually, let's back up to the sales numbers and stuff. Because I know I, I put that kind of on the front end, on the end of this of this webcast. And 
the reason I kind of did that was obviously to say, hey, yeah, well, there's some money in this as well. I'm blowing out numbers that I never thought and dreamed I would be doing. That's supposed to be inspirational. That was not supposed to be bragging. However, those numbers came out from the from wanting to solve a problem and help people. If you're chasing a number, you're not chasing happiness, right? You're not, that's just a number. Like you can, there's always going to be a bigger number, right? And so I, I specifically was offered sales with an IT on a couple different occasions. And I turned them down because I saw how the company treated. And this wasn't, this wasn't centric to the company I, like I worked for specifically. Like it's across the, I've seen it across the industry. Mm -hmm. And sales reps like to hop from, from company to company because they're always resetting their quotas. Always. Always resetting like you and, and, and it blows my mind when I see somebody that's like a re, like an RSM or something like that, like a director of sales channel, whatever. And they've been with the company for 20 years. I know those people because those same people are the ones offering me the sales gig. And I, and I go good for them because somehow they've survived the rabbit hole or the rat race or whatever the heck you want to call it of the constant reset of your of your sales quota in that environment. And I did not want to do it. I, my, my systems consultant at the time at, at, at one of the companies that I was with, and I won't mention any names, it, the company wanted to screw him out of a $100,000 commission. He basically told me he was going to quit. And that person, if he ever sees this, he would know exactly who he is. And I, I won't say his name. But, but And they ended up making him as a, an account executive. Which, because the account executive, who I'm also friends with, lives in Maryland, he uh, he went he he made his money across all the, all the different attributes, like across both the peripherals all the way down to servers, storage, whatever. Of course, his account and this other guy that lined up both servers and storage, they they didn't want to pay up. And so, if you're in the tech sector and you're in so like in your sales. You're constantly, you're constant. You know this to be true. You hit your number, you get a pat on the back, you make a bonus, right? And then guess what happens? They re oh, well, you hit it already once. Let's go ahead and you hit it again, plus then, you know, 10, 15, mm -hmm. 20%. They're always constantly increasing that. But if you don't hit your number, you're potentially on the chopping block. And so for somebody that wants to jump into looking at solar specifically and you're in sales, this is something that you don't have to worry about here because you set that number. What is your number and your hap like? Where is your happy happiness level going to be? Remembering that money doesn't buy, it doesn't doesn't make you happy, but it gives you it definitely gives you options. Money is always a tool, and so you as yourself set that number. You can say, is it twenty thousand dollars this month? Is it thirty thousand? Is it fifty thousand? Is it five thousand? Right? Whatever that number is, like, what is it? Is it just making sure that your family can go to the grocery store and not look at a budget? Like, what is that? Like, there's no grocery budget this month. There's like, hey, let's go ahead and let's eat out. We did well this month. So if you are looking at trying to get into solar sales and you're from a sales background, know that that's something that you can just, you're not going to have to worry about that. Nobody's trying to like, nobody's trying to tell you, you need to do this, you need to do that. Now, if you're in a traditional solar company, they will do that because you have to sell this product. You have to, you know, that, and that's one reason why I've always told my clients, I don't work for the company. I work for you. And so if you're looking at trying to get into this, that's something that, you know, you can, you can know at this point that you, you don't have to watch your back. Mm. Right now you should always like Mark Cuban likes to say, work like somebody's trying to take it away from you. Always do that. But you don't have to worry about them trying to bring in somebody else that will do your same job for lesser of a commission, right? Because and and basically scooting you out the door in two to three years because you blew the numbers so well in your startup that now you have to hop to another company, do it all over again, hop to another company. And that's something that I've seen is account executives and system consultants or systems engineers that work really well together, they'll move together. Yeah. Because of that because they work in such good tandem that they've they figured out how to print the money, and which I'm like that's awesome that's great. But it was like whenever I see somebody hop, I'm like all right, just I'm watching LinkedIn to say all right, I'm gonna see multiple people here jump. Like I'm I know to. exactly yeah. who it is. Yeah, you right? gotta bring them. Yeah, you gotta bring them right. And so that would that. be my my advice to you is no, after all of that is don't <laughs> chase. I'm sorry, it's don't chase, kind of the number, 
chase your your targets for helping people because the money will follow. Basically, fix a problem. That's what business is. You're finding you're finding a problem to solve. My mentor and, years ago, man, taught me whoever whoever solves the biggest problem for the most amount of people makes the most amount of money. Um, arguably the, the biggest nugget that was ever dropped on me that shaped me professionally. I a hundred percent agree with you. I, I, I now look for problems, by the way, talk about mindset. It changes things instead mm -hmm. of saying, like, Oh my gosh, the world's falling. I'm like, dude, how can we solve this? What can we do to fix this? I totally agree. Um, you did not know I was going to do this. So I'll apologize later. It is what it is. Um, I, as a thank you to having you come on and, and share your nuggets, your wisdom with everybody. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, you can see it. I am going to throw out his his handles for all of his social medias, uh, media accounts, excuse me, which is Shaw NRG Consulting for those checking it out on the podcast. Once again, that is Shaw, S-H-A-W, N-R-G Consulting. You can find him on Facebook, Instagram. Are you on TikTok? No, I'm on TikTok. No. Okay, cool. So find him on Facebook and Instagram. Um, obviously, no, he is busy, but he will reach out. He loves to connect with people. He's always looking to network and grow. Um, I'll speak for everyone on the audience, whether YouTube or on the podcast, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. You brought the fire. You dropped some nuggets. Um, so I, I can't thank you enough, man. I, I, I just awesome. Well, I appreciate it, Aaron. This has been great. I, when you invited me on, I knew it was going to be a good time. I was like, yeah, I'm going to totally do it. Like, I normally don't do anything like this. Like, I've been doing a lot more calls and public speaking. You got to get out of your comfort zone. That's 100%. the other thing. Break, it, break your, break, you know, whatever ceiling you've set for yourself, break through it. Totally agree. Awesome, guys. Well, be good, be safe, and God bless. We'll talk soon.